Well, it is way too early to know the circumstances behind the murder of this lieutenant in Illinois, but it, it clearly comes just days after Sheriff Deputy Darren Goforth was shot execution style in an attack that his boss linked to the, quote, dangerous environment created by the Black Lives Matter movement. Tonight, a petition has popped up at change.org pressuring President Obama to send a delegation to the deputy's funeral on Friday. And some leading voices in law enforcement are also pressuring the president to speak out against protests, against protests like this one, which took place a day after the murder of the sheriff's deputy. Joining me now, Ron Hosko, president of the Law Enforcement Legal Defense Fund and a former assistant director of the FBI, and Sheriff David Clark of the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office. Thank you both for being here. And so let me ask you, Ron, whether you think the president has an obligation to speak out against what we're hearing, the rhetoric we are hearing from this group specifically, or not? I do, Megan. I think that this president has uh, taken some affirmative steps and he's made some comments in the past in other police encounters, some of which uh, raise questions about his support for law enforcement generally. Uh, and now it's time in light of not just uh, the actions of this group, but at this time in America. Last month was a bloody month for law enforcement. Fifteen police officers killed. And you know what Here we're we hearing? Are, day you know one. You know what we're hearing from, from you know, the, the Black Lives Matter <clears throat> movement defenders on that, Sheriff Clark, is, well, overall, the numbers are not so bad of cops getting killed. So, you know, I know they're up for right now, but like year to year, you, you guys are doing okay. It's the disgusting nature uh, that this movement has taken. It's the slime that I talk about. But then again, Megan, they have the same attitude about black on black crime, no big deal, you know, nothing to see here. I think the president of the United States, because he waded into this in the days after Ferguson with some inflammatory rhetoric, uh, where he breathed life into this anti-cop sentiment uh, that now exists in the United States, he made the statement that our law enforcement officers have a fear of people that don't look like them. Uh, you look at the uh, Fox Lake lieutenant who, 30 years in the job, the report I got, he was considering retiring at the end of the month. He had 30 more days to go, father oh. of four, and now look at, at, at what we're looking at here now. Look. The president now, because he waded into this and he waded in after the Cambridge uh, Police Department where he said they acted stupidly and some other statements that he said, he's got an obligation to come out now and walk some of this back and remind people of the important role that law enforcement officers play in that he does no that. longer with this anti-cop madness, okay, this anti-cop slime. He always does that. Tolerated. He always gives a shout out to the cops when he comments on this matter. But the, the critics have said, Ron, that he, there's always, a, whenever he compliments the cops or, or you know, pays tribute to the hard work they do, there's always a but. You know, but we've seen this epidemic. But, you know, young black men have good reason to fear. But we have this problem that the cops are responsible for and so on. We have, and too often it does seem like it is superficial, like it's something he has to say, not something he feels strongly about or truly believes in. And here we have a movement with hundreds of people standing behind a Black Lives Matter banner, discrediting themselves. They've done it before. When is it time for senior administration officials to discredit them as well? These are people who are tugging as hard as they can and tearing at the fabric of trust between our community and law enforcement. It's time to push them to the margins. Do, how, uh, let me see, we have, we, I think we have some of the video. So it's not just the, what do we want, dead cops, when do we want them now, which we saw in New York City in December. Mm -hmm. Two cops were killed, execution style. It's not just what we saw uh, in Minnesota at the state fair, as people were chanting, pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon, which was the same thing the guy who executed the two New York City cops posted online right before he murdered them. But here's some of the messaging we're hearing. This is, this is just from August, from the New Black Panther movement. Listen to them. Bang, bang, Sheriff Clark, and they went on from there saying, you're going to stop doing what you're doing or we'll start creeping up on you in the darkness. That's still some of the tame stuff that uh, compared to some of the real ugly, vile stuff that I've heard. But look, 
Megan, the Attorney General of the United States has an opportunity here to display some leadership. She's a law enforcement officer as the Attorney General. I made a call into her office in July to talk about this uptick in the killing of law enforcement officers across the United States. And she handed that off, or her office did, to an underling director who sent me an email saying, thanks for the offers the offer, but the uh, Attorney General's schedule won't allow her to have a conversation with you, a cold slap in the face. It's that sort of thing that, you know, makes us here at the local level, the local law enforcement officer, not have any faith in the Attorney General's Office of the United States. We know the political class, including the President, has turned his back on us, and we're kind of out here alone now, but we're still going to serve our communities, as the Lieutenant Fox Lake showed, 30 days from retirement. He's still out there doing self-initiated policing, and it cost him his life. Wow. And the manhunt continues as darkness has fallen. Gentlemen, thank you both so much. Thanks, Megan. Thank you, Megan. When a crazed gunman opened fire in Tucson back in 2011, dozens of Democrats were quick to blame the angry rhetoric, in their words, of the Tea Party and its supporters. And they demanded action. So where are those voices on the angry rhetoric today that we are hearing in the bang, bang, oink, oink, pigs in a blanket crowd?